at Pisces. We're gonna get into a singles reading because it's been a while since I've done one. As I was singing, I started singing, or as I was singing, as I started this reading, I started hearing Red by Taylor Swift. Some of you could be listening to that. All right, let's see what's coming in. Friendly reminder, guys, my tarot course and manifestation workshop is 30% off right now. That sale will be ending here coming up. So if you wanna hit it up, you can. Okay, be careful of some sort of friendship getting into murky waters. I'm seeing for some of you as a single person, you could have someone external to you where there's a friendship, there's an acquaintanceship, this person could want this to go to more, but they don't want everything with you. That person has some sort of an addiction, whether it's addicted to their past, addicted to someone who's not good for them, addicted to toxic environments. Some people are addicted to tra trauma, is what I was about to say, drama. Some people are addicted to the fight or flight. If you grow up in homes where there's fight or flight or needing to prove yourself or always having to fight for your position, you will subconsciously attract that or gravitate towards that and you will choose that because that's what you're used to. So unless you're very self-aware and you're understanding why you're putting yourself in those circumstances or situations, you won't know until it's too late. That's what I'm getting with someone that you are either in murky grounds with right now or you were in the past. Someone here is to teach you a lesson. They're not a blessing, they're a lesson, okay? So again, be careful of getting to those murky waters and expecting someone to give you everything when they're getting everything by giving you nothing, okay? I do see that you need to set boundaries with this person. I see that this person is going to reject you in some sense, form, or fashion. So again, this could, you, this could be you saying, hey, listen, I wanna progress this. We're, they're gonna reject it. Be aware that if you allow yourself to get in murky waters, it could get stuck there. Now it can get out of there, but it could get stuck there. So you need to be very conscious and very aware that if you put yourself in a circumstance or a situation where someone's getting everything from you, you can't expect them to give everything when they're giving nothing and you're giving them everything, okay? Imagine someone coming to a buffet and not paying you, but you keep feeding them. Why would you be mad at them? You're the one feeding them. You're giving them food. You ain't making them pay. You gotta be mad at yourself for that, okay? So some of you need to realize that. You could be in denial around the fact that someone here is more of a headache and a lesson than a blessing, but you could be so caught up in the passion and the fun that you're not realizing it's gonna get stuck in an area that you don't need to be in. Yeah, again, that person's got obstacles, unhealed wounds or blocking movement forward. This person's teaching you a lesson. Lesson number one, you can't change people's mind. Lesson number two, you can't make someone want something that they don't want. Lesson number three, you can't make someone good for you when they're not good for you. If someone's not good for themselves, they ain't good for you, okay? So, I wanna see no lovers, no nothing, what's coming out for you. I feel like you're finding yourself again. Ooh, as I said that, self-care. <laughs> Focusing on yourself, clean, clearing your energy field. It almost said cleaning. Some of you could be cleaning, cleaning things, cleaning out things, cleaning out your closet, cleaning out your storage room, cleaning out things. I see you focusing on yourself. I see you not taking action unless you know it's what you want to take. I see you trusting that you and someone are on different pages and... Yeah, you and someone's on different pages. There's chemistry, but until this person's, a, until that person's at a place where they're able to release things that doesn't serve them, they're no good to you. They're no good for you. I'm hearing bad for me by Kevin Gates. That person could be bad for you, bad for your mental health, bad for your stability, bad for your emotions. If someone makes you confused or someone feeds you an illusion, that can fuck with your mental health. That can also mess with your confidence. Don't allow someone to do that. If someone leaves you confused or won't give you conversations or necessary information, see that as them trying to manipulate it in their favor. Okay? I see you finding yourself again. A lot of people are viewing you as a prize. A lot of people are viewing you as something that they want but they can't touch. They're showing me like a coach store, a Tiffany's store. 
A lot of people are viewing you as something that's expensive. I'm seeing someone walk in a room and they're glowing. So here coming up, you might notice that a lot of people are going to pay attention to you. Your energy might be glowing. You might just be coming off as someone who's very strong, confident, independent, abundant. And a lot of people, I just heard you can look, but you can't touch. A lot of people might be looking at you. They might not, they might not know. They might not know though. They might know though that they can't touch you. There could be a lot of people who's going to look at you, but not want to approach you. There could be a lot of people who just want to admire you because they see you as some sort of prize. They see you as someone who's very self-possessed. They see you as someone who's very balanced. They see you as someone who's got a lot of passion just kind of oozing off of them. You're on fire. But a lot of people feel like they could not see your, your soul, who you truly are. The portals to your deep inside is where people get blocked off, is what I heard. There could be a lot of people in your energy who's kind of wanting to date you or entertain you, but I don't see you dating or entertaining anyone. I feel like a lot of you could just be focusing on yourself right now. I could have swore a card flipped, but I don't see it. So someone here recently could have flipped on you. This could be a friend, could be a lover, could be a family member. Someone here recently could have flipped a switch. They were great one day, they weren't the next, okay? I'm seeing that that happened in divine timing. There could have been something this person wanted or expected from you, and you could have um, you could have been shocked by what happened. So this could have been a family member, a friend, a lover. This could have been someone who acted in a certain way that really shocked you. Like, damn, show me who you really are. But you could now be looking at this person and going, whoa, now I see it, you wanted something from me. You, you want, there was a reason for the pursuit of wanting to be my friend, wanting to be a close family member, or wanting to be a lover. It's because you wanted something from me. I do see that that person might try to reunite with you, but I'm also seeing you being unsure if you want to let that person back in. So if someone kind of overreacts or reacts in a way that you feel was not justified, I think you're going to have a conversation with them, but I don't know if you're going to be willing to fix it or if you're going to be okay with it going back to what it used to be. Again, I'm seeing a lot of people having their eyes on you. There could be a lot of people wanting to talk to you, take action towards you, be in your energy. This could be people who are inviting you to things you don't want to go. You don't want to date nobody. You don't want to entertain anybody. I'm seeing you being tired. It's like you're over it. And as I just said that, look, ten of wands, feeling burdened, feeling tired, feeling like, you know what? Life is life in and it's coming at me hard. There could be a leap or a risk you're wanting to take in your life and it could be overwhelming you. This could be needing a new job and you're feeling really overwhelmed around the fact that you're having to go to all these places and interview and it's exhausting. This could be a business aspect where you're trying to get something off the ground and you feel like you take four steps forward, you got two steps back. You could be feeling really overwhelmed and the last thing you could want to get time, attention, or effort could be other people. It's like you're really self-focused. You're really consumed with yourself. And a lot of people are looking at you and going, whoa, look how that person's shining. A lot of people see you as someone who's very experienced, someone who is, um, you're like a buck in the wild. A lot of people are seeing you as someone who's emotionally cut off. They could even view you as someone who is a little emotionally manipulative. Someone who gets very defensive when it comes to their emotions. I'm telling, a lot of people are viewing you as someone where something could have crumbled and because it left you out in the cold or because it was some sort of lacking energy. So let's say that you were talking to someone, dating someone, entertaining someone. It didn't work out. People see you as someone who now decided to hermit yourself. I'm, na I'm never dating again. I'm never talking again. F the opposite sex. Don't touch me. You could be so emotionally cut off that a lot of people could see you as someone who... You're, uh, you're emotionally unstable is how people are viewing you. That's people that know you, though. There's two separate personas that you're showing up as. 
People who know you see you as someone who is so damaged that they don't know if you're ever going to be able to get over that damage. Now, I found it interesting that I said that because I don't feel that you're damaged. I feel that you've been through hell, and I feel once you go through hell, you're, you're less likely to get on that bus to hell. If you've been in a toxic relationship or a toxic family dynamic or a toxic friendship, you're less likely to trust people because you recognize that someone can sit here all day and say what they're going to do and say who they are. But a lot of people are in denial and not aware and they think that they're one thing when they're actually something completely different. You've gotten to a place where you've been like, you know what, emotionally, I don't care anymore. I'm not giving you compassion. I'm not giving you love. You could stub your toe and I don't care. That's not my problem. That's how people view you if they know you. If they don't know you, they view you as someone who's hella confident. You don't got no worries in the world. They don't see the emotional scars that you've been through because they don't get to know you on that deeper level. You could hide that part of you. People could view you as someone that they want to give to. So this could be an energy where if you're single and you go somewhere, you might be talking to the salesperson. You might be talking to the cashier. You might be talking to someone. Next thing you know, there's going to be six more people coming because they want to be in the conversation with you. They want to give. They want to receive. What are you saying over there? What y'all talking about? Why y'all laughing so much? People are going to want to be a part of it. Some of it's because these people really like you. Some of it's just because there's this there's aura. There's this light that's going to be coming off of you here in the next few weeks where, <laughs> baby, you're, you're a light, okay? What is it, moth to a flame? People can't help but gravitate towards you. There are a lot of people who are wanting to, again, date or entertain you, but they see you as someone who's not dating or entertaining at all. They see you as someone who's given up, you're drained. It's kind of like you're in between giving up and just, it's like, I don't wanna give up, but I'm giving up. <laughs> I don't wanna give up, but I'm tired. That's kind of your energy. A lot of you are done expecting someone or something amazing to come in your life. I heard I'm not waiting for a miracle to happen because miracles don't happen to me. And they keep telling me that you're wanting someone who adds value, who makes you happy, and who sees your worth from the start. But you feel like people don't last more than eight days, eight weeks, eight months, or eight years. It's like you see other people as people who are very impulsive. Yeah, you say you want forever, but your forever probably only lasts seven years. That's how people see you. That's how you kind of show up. I see you doing a lot of deep self-reflection around an ending that took place. You're not the kind of person that's going to jump from relationship to relationship bringing that baggage with you. You're the kind of person who's going to take some time to yourself. You're going to have the strength and the courage to look at the things that hurt. You're going to have the strength and the courage to rip the band-aid off and go, whoa, that's a bullet hole. I cannot believe I thought I was going to be able to fix a bullet hole with a band-aid. I got to, I got to heal this wound. I got to fix it. This hurts. You're going to look at it. You're going to recognize it. You're going to understand why it hurts. And then you're going to heal it to the best of your ability. And again, they keep telling me that you're wanting someone who's going to add value, who's going to make you happy, who's going to see your worth from the start. I don't want to have to prove what I'm worthy of. I don't want to have to prove to you that you should care about me and that I'm going to have your back. That's how you're showing up. And they want you to know that you deserve that. And they want you to know that they do know that you're burdened and you're feeling like it's never going to come. They want you to know that they do see that you're losing hope and you're tired of dealing with the same fucking people who come in to then lead to a bad ending. Whether it's not wanting the same thing, one person doing the other wrong, lack of conversation or commitment. It's like there's always something going wrong. And they're saying that they know that you're doing a lot of self-reflection on what you can do to change it, but sometimes it isn't you. You're doing the best that you can. And I think one of the things you're learning is that when you're on different pages with someone, when you don't share the same vision, see that as an exit. Imagine going to the car dealership and saying, hey, I want a brand new Acura. I want it black on black. I want black rims and I want a loaded package. I want, I want the system booming when it comes around the corner. Imagine them bringing you a car and going, okay, here's a red one. It's got red interior. It's got uh, aluminum wheels. That's not what I asked for. We obviously are share, we, we don't share the same vision. Treat that circumstance the same way that you would treat a relationship. Okay, I asked for this. You didn't give it. So guess what? I'm going to go to a different company because I asked for what I wanted. 
you showed me you couldn't bring that or you don't have good listening skills. So I'm going to see that as a reason for me to leave. But a lot of you have gotten to a place where in relationships, whether it's family members, friends, or lovers, you would try to make it work even though you know it's not going to work, even though you're getting the complete opposite of what you asked for. Hey, I want to be accepted. Hey, I want to be valued. Hey, I want someone to understand me and not constantly critique me or tear me down. That lover, that friend, that family member could do the complete opposite, but expect you to be buddy, buddy, friend, friend. It don't work like that. You're allowed to set your boundary and go, okay, this doesn't work for me, and you don't seem to want to evolve, grow, or shift, so this is where our road ends. A lot of you had to get to that point where you started seeing relationships as transactions, not because it's good, it's bad, it's black, it's white, because at the end of the day, you were giving to shit where you didn't share the same vision, but you were hoping the vision would change. You would hope that they would evolve, they would grow, they would... And it doesn't work like that. And if it does, awesome, perfect, they'll know where to find you. If that dealership all of a sudden gets that black on black on black car, they know where to find you. And if not, they'll never hear from you again and they won't get your money. That's not your fault, that's theirs. Keep that in mind. I want you to know that you're gonna get what you're asking for, but you have to remember that the best things in your life are usually, they usually take more time and more detail. You know, an expensive car, they don't make overnight. The things that are very luxury and valuable, they don't make overnight. I see you getting over something and moving on. I see you getting a sense of confidence, abundance, and independence. And I see you getting to a place of peace on your own before you get to your next suitor, your next lover. So a lot of you, your focus is getting over something before getting in something else because you know that it's gonna benefit you and your future partner. You don't want your future partner to be able to trigger you because they said your ex's name. It might not have been, even been your ex that they were talking about, but if they say the name Franklin, all of a sudden you're dropping bowls. You're in a place where you know, okay, I need to heal the sides of me that might be triggered, that might be traumatized from what I've been through. And it's okay for me to give myself permission to do that because I know it's going to allow my future to be better, to be broader, to be more grand because I was willing to do the hard work, the necessary work. Again, a lot of people see you as someone who's got expensive taste. You're expensive, but you're humble. A lot of people see you as someone who's very emotionally fulfilled. Again, very confident. They see you as someone who's got expensive taste. People see you as someone who, when you get out of the car, people see you as someone who is expensive. Now, here's the thing. You could say, Danielle, I shop at Goodwill. Uh-huh. But when you get out of the car, they might be like, look at them. Those look like brand new pants. That looks like a Nike shirt. Okay, well, you might've got it from the Goodwill. You might've not even spent a ton of money on it. But when people view you, they view you as someone who loves expensive things, someone who's very expensive, someone who might have more money or might have more things going for them than what you let people know. But they also see you as someone who's very humble. You're the kind of person where you're not going around going, look at my necklace, look at my purse, I'm so rich. Don't you wish you were? You're the kind of person who's like, you can't pay for that. Hey, can I pay that for them? You're not going to go around and flaunt what you have or what you can do, but there is a very caring, loving side of you, a very humble side of you, and a lot of people see you as that person, okay? They see you as someone who's very strong, A lot of people also see you as someone who's able to see through people who are snakes, who are not honest. So you might have the ability to walk into a room and look at someone and go, uh, there's something about you. I don't like it. Stay away from me. You're able to see people who are snakes in a way that others are not. Because I feel like you pick up on their energy. And I feel like when other people, you know, your family members, your friends, maybe your lover, if they get involved with those people, they don't realize what's happening until it's too late, until it really takes them down. Okay, let's go back to you have an expensive taste. A lot of people feel like you have expensive taste. There's just something about you that screams expensive. <laughs> Interesting. I'm seeing a lot of people here coming up, maybe hitting on you. Um, this could be people coming on dating apps, wanting to hit on you. 
These could be people out in public hitting on you, making comments. You might find in the next few weeks, you're gonna get a lot of attention that you don't want. Unsolicited attention is what I just heard. I'm seeing these people giving you conversations and giving you clarity around how they view you and how they feel for you. So these are gonna be people who are like, oh my God, you're so gorgeous. It's gonna be people who do not have the ability to not say it. They're gonna to have to say it to you. But I am seeing that you're gonna be telling these people, no thank you. So if these are people in your dating apps making these little dumb lines instead of actually starting a conversation like a mature adult because they don't know what to say. I see you writing back and being like, I'm not interested, thank you though, I appreciate you. I see you rejecting a lot of people mainly because you feel that it's not time for you to give your heart. A lot of you feel that it's, it's your time to focus on yourself before you take any action. A lot of you are gonna be in a place of deep self-reflection and trying to understand maybe who you got tangled up in who you've had around you, and you're really gonna have the strength and the courage to see things that might hurt you, that might disappoint you, that might make you realize, whoa, I put myself in a bad situation and I knew all along it was gonna happen like that. So yeah, I wanna blame so-and-so for doing that to me, but maybe I need to blame myself for thinking that they were different, for thinking that they were better than that, for not seeing their red flags or seeing the problems that they showed me clearly, but I didn't wanna believe that that's who they were. That could be for some of you. And again, once you get through that, I think you're going to go to something more fulfilling. But again, right now, some of you are really stuck on what that looks like. Some of you are at a place where you're like, I don't think relationships are for me, Danielle. I don't think this is for me. I don't think living here is for me. A lot of you are at a place of like changing your perspective and really questioning what's right for you and what isn't. Some of you could even be questioning whether or not you want a commitment you want to, to settle down some of you are getting to the conclusion you know I think I want to travel on my own I don't think I want a partner I think I want to explore and live my life and quit putting myself in emotional predicaments where I get my heart broken or I get disappointed time and time and time again because the only person who gets burdened by it and feels like their loyalty is thrown to the dust is me a lot of you feel like you are loyal to a fault and your loyalty is always taken for granted. So some of you are really at a place right now where it's like it's not about them, it's about me. It's about me growing, it's about me expanding, it's about me getting to the person I wanna be, and it's about me being happy. And I'm changing my perspective on what that happiness looks like and I'm starting to see that yeah, I want someone who values me and makes me happy and sees my worth from the start, but I'm also recognizing that if I can't get that from an external person, I can be that person. That's what's happening here. Some of you might end up traveling or doing, maybe going on a boat, kayaking. Some of you could be doing something on your own and it's gonna bring a lot of emotional fulfillment to you. Again, being recognized by a lot of people. There could be someone from your past spying on you, someone who's really disappointed, someone who's really guarded. Hmm. Someone who has seen that you've grown significantly. I'm not talking about that person. Okay. Give me a little bit more. Some of you here coming up, there could be a schedule mishap or some sort of issue. I see that being cleared up, but I also see you possibly not showing up or not putting interest into it. Someone here is gonna offer you something, but again, you're gonna be unsure. So that's what I'm saying. This could be a lover. This could be someone that wants to collaborate with you, but lacks collaboration. So there's a dynamic here in your near future, whether it's a family member, a friend, or a lover, where you feel like this person's not a team player. There's either gonna be a schedule mishap, there's gonna be a traveling issue, there's going to be an issue where resolving it's going to be hard because there's not teamwork. So let's say that this is a schedule mishap. This could be something as simple as one of you's not keeping up with your schedule like you're supposed to, and the other one ends up getting their feelings hurt because one person might try to fix it and the other one doesn't want to be a team player. I'm seeing that something could end up transforming in the next, month, next few months in that relationship, but I'm also seeing 
that that person might not have the ability to be completely honest with themselves. So be, be aware of that. Someone could want to get what they want, but they could also, okay. So let's say that this is like a friend. They could want what they want from you, but they could not be a team player. Okay, so I want your schedule I want your schedule to be how it needs to be, but I don't want to be a team player and move my schedule around. This could be a lover who wants to offer something, but is not honest with themselves around the fact that they could have the tendency to think that they deserve certain, that someone attached to you is a little entitled. I'm just going to be blunt, okay? You've got a friend, a family member, or a lover who's entitled. So, you need to move your schedule around and make me happy. It doesn't matter if I canceled. It doesn't matter if I did A, B, C, or D. All that matters is that you're the problem. If this is a baby mama, a baby daddy, this is someone who could quit a job because they don't want to pay you child support. They will go work somewhere else or go without income at all because you're not getting child support. This is someone who's a little bit of a petty betty, but what they're not recognizing is they're not a team player. So you can sit here all day and be mad that other people aren't giving you what you want, but are you being a team player? Are you being understanding? Are you being compassionate? I'm saying here that you're gonna go after some sort of dream and that there could be some sort of communication that's gonna come from this person. I see you being really discontent with them. So if this is a friend, I see you being like, I don't know why you're reaching out. You didn't want to be a team player. You didn't want to fix it. I don't know why we can fix it now. This is a baby mama, baby daddy. They're going to disappear. They're going to maybe go after some sense of emotional fulfillment. They could marry someone for money. They could end up quitting their job or shifting their job. So you don't get money. But then in a few months, they might want to heal it or fix it. I see you being discontent and being like, you know, it's so interesting to me that you think you can do whatever you want and when two or three months pass, oh, well, I want to fix it. When you're not a team player at all, how are we supposed to fix something when you're not collaborating? I put on the schedule, hey, we're going to do this on Friday. You show up two weeks from then and go, well, I couldn't, I didn't call it, doesn't matter, but I want it now. It doesn't work like that. That's the energy I'm seeing here. I see you being unsure whether or not you want to allow that person in. I feel like it's kind of a given is what I'm saying. That this person is impulsive, takes impulsive action, and has a lot of growing up to do, to be honest with you. So, I see you possibly regretting or being sad. Like, I regret trusting you. I'm really sad that this is the version of yourself you want to show me. But in the same instance, when someone shows you who they are, believe them, okay? Because when people are mad at you, when people aren't getting what they want from you, the real version of them will come out, okay? So, whoever this is, they're not a team player. It's the kind of person who wants to cancel plans but doesn't want to do the necessary action to get the plans going again. If you're going to cancel plans, that's fine. But then are you going to take the action to get the plans going again? Or are you just going to ignore that there was plans and then reach out six months later and go, oh, hey, sorry, forgot. Let's meet up. Man, you're not much of a team player, are you? Now let's try though. Be aware of that. Someone that's not a team player could want to come back in your life. Do you want to be a team player? And are they a team player now? That's going to be up to you. I see you saying to yourself, I see you saying to yourself, I see you recognizing that maybe you and a lot of people around you just aren't the same. You don't want the same things in life. You're not on the same paths. And some of you are going to be cutting a lot of people off. I see you really enjoying yourself. I see you having a lot of fun. And I see you really connecting to yourself this year, especially like you never have before. Now, again, I see some other people, but I don't see you really giving to other people. So that's going to be up to you. Okay, I'm going to leave this here. I'll see you guys tomorrow.